Smoking a pipe can be a relaxing and enjoyable hobby, and there's no reason it shouldn't be. Hey everybody, I'm Eric, and today on Tea and Tobacco, I'm going to show you how to smoke a pipe. Now, right off the bat, I do want to say that there's a slight learning curve when it comes to smoking a pipe. It's not as straightforward as a cigar or a cigarette where you just light it and go. There is a little bit more maintenance that you have to do while you're smoking a pipe. Uh, I don't want you to get overwhelmed by that, and I also don't want your first few smoking experiences to taint any future enjoyment that you may get from smoking a pipe. Everybody's first few times smoking um, can be a little frustrating just because it's, it's something new and you just kind of have to get used to it and learn, and there's a little bit of figuring out as you go. Um, but hopefully the uh, information and tips in this video can help you move along a little faster. All right, so right off the bat, you're gonna need a few things. Obviously, you're going to need a pipe. Now, I will make a video in the future on selecting your first pipe, but right now I will say, get something semi-decent. Um, this is actually the first pipe I ever bought. This is a Brebia uh, Golden Extra. I paid about uh, $85, I believe, for it. Now, I know basket pipes and corn cobs can be attractive because of their low price, but they may not provide the best smoking experience, especially for the first time. Now, spending you know, 80 to $90 may sound like a lot right off the bat, especially if you're not sure if you're going to continue smoking. But if you buy something like this or a Peterson or a Savinelli or a Nording in that price range, you could easily resell it on eBay for 70 to 80% of its value, even if it's been smoked five to 10 times. So I would definitely go and try to get something semi-decent. 80 to $90 price range is pretty good. You'll get something relatively decent. So that's what I have to say about picking out your first pipe and I'll, I'll go into future uh, detail in a different video. All right, so you're gonna need a pipe. You're going to need a pipe tool. Uh, this is the most common one you'll see. This is called a Czech pipe tool uh, because it is made in Czech Republic. Uh, they're about $1 to $2. This one uh, is a little fancier. Uh, really all you're looking for is you need a tamper, which is this flat piece here, and you're going to need a spike, or sometimes called a pick, or a nail. Uh, you're also going to need a soft flame lighter or matches. Uh, I would suggest matches for your first time, and I will make a video in the future on why. Uh, you're going to need some tobacco. I am using a ribbon cut tobacco because one, ease of packing, and two, it is the overall majority of tobaccos out there that you're going to find are going to be in this format. I'll make a video in the future on uh, different cuts of tobacco and how to pack them. Uh, you're also going to want an ashtray. This is just a uh, cigar ashtray. Re really any ashtray will do. And if, uh, you're also going to need some pipe cleaners. Uh, yes, they are not just for making crafts in kindergarten, uh, but don't get the uh, craft ones because you don't want little neon fuzzies in your pipe. And uh, these ones are actually made for pipes. And then lastly, uh, it's optional, but I prefer to use a piece of paper when I'm uh, packing my pipes because then all the stuff that happens to fall on the uh, table is easy to either put back into the top of my pipe or back into the jar that it came from. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to pack a pipe. So here I have my pipe and my tobacco. Quickly, I want to talk about making sure that you have the right moisture content in your tobacco. And there's an easy way to do it. It's called the pinch or squeeze test. So what you're going to want to do is take some tobacco in your hand and then squeeze it between your fingers. And when you let go, it should start to expand on its own and kind of fall back apart. Now, if you squeeze it and it crunches and turns into dust, your tobacco is way too dry and you're gonna to have to add moisture back into your tobacco and I'll make a separate video on that in the future. Uh, if you squeeze it and it stays intact into that ball and doesn't expand, or even worse, if water comes out of it, your tobacco is way too moist and you're gonna to have to let it dry out a little bit until it gets down into that zone where it starts to fall apart after you release the pressure. All right, so I'm gonna be using what's called the uh, gravity method or the layer method or the three-step method it's all different names for exactly the same thing. So basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to lightly put tobacco into the pipe 
and then you can compress it in multiple layers. So the first time I find that I'm usually compressing it to about halfway down the bowl, and then the next time is halfway between the top and the previous layer, and then the last time, same. So it's basically going half, half, half uh, until you have the bowl filled. Uh, a lot of times you'll hear it called the three-step method, but depending on the size of your pipe, it could be two, it could be four or five, depending, you might have a huge pipe. I have a, I have a pipe that's up there that I definitely need to do four, sometimes five layers. All right, so this is how you do it. So what you wanna do, you just want to basically lightly let gravity take some tobacco into the pipe. Uh, that's why it's, it's what I call it the gravity method or the layer method. Now I'm going to pack this down to about halfway down the bowl. Uh, and then I'm going to let gravity do its work thing again. And then pack it halfway between the top and the previous layer. And again, put tobacco in the pipe and compress it down. And this is going to sit pretty close to the top. As you can see, each time I put it on, I put you know over the top. so. You kind of get a little bit extra more than halfway. So there you go. Uh, you can kind of compress it with your thumb. You can give it a little twist. Some people like to do it um, just to kind of intertwine some of the layers. I usually don't, but it gets the job done. So there we go. We are pretty much ready to start smoking. Oh, and here's the reason why I usually have a piece of paper. As you can see, I had a bunch that was falling out. Obviously, I started with some on the page, but now it's easy enough where I can fold this over and get it in, and then I can easily dump it back into my jar. All right, so now that you have your pipe packed, give it a little test draw. You're looking for a little bit of resistance. I like mine at about a thin milkshake through a straw. Uh, if it's packed way too tight and you can't draw air through, uh, just take your pipe tool with the nail, scoop out the tobacco, and just repack it. Uh, if it is too loose and you have like no resistance at all, you can just add a little bit more tobacco and give it a little bit stiffer compression. All right, so now that you have your pipe ready to go, you can move on to lighting. Now, lighting is usually a two-step process. You're gonna light it once, which is called the false light or the charring light, uh, because as soon as you touch heat to this, this compressed tobacco is going to want to expand and decompress, and that ends up making it go out. Uh, what you'll do after that, you'll take your tamper, and you'll basically recompress that top layer, and then you will light it again, which is called the true light. Sometimes you will get a second false light. Don't worry about it. It's not a huge deal if it happens. You just tamp down the top again, and then light your pipe. All right, so I'm going to be using matches. A uh, quick thing about matches. You're gonna to wanna to let the sulfur burn off before you touch to the top of the tobacco. So here we go. I'm gonna light it. Definitely the sulfur is burned off at this point. And now what you're gonna to wanna to do, you're gonna to wanna to move it in a circular motion while taking short draws on your pipe. All right, now you can see I have some tobacco that's come up out of the bowl um, during this first lighting. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take my tamper and tamp it back down to where it was. And of course it's gone out. Not a big deal. It's perfectly normal and what happens pretty much every time. So I will light my second one. Let the sulfur burn off. And then basically same thing, you wanna move it around in a circular motion while taking short puffs on your pipe. I had a little more expansion, so I'm actually going to tamp this while drawing and hopefully that'll keep it lit. All right, and away you go. Now, the 
goal of smoking a pipe is just to get uh, cool smoke into your mouth so you can enjoy the flavor and then you exhale it out. Now you can let it remain in your mouth longer. You can do it short. Um, you can just let it flow out on its own. You can press it out with your, with your lungs. Uh, Any way is really up to you. One thing you're going to want to take very slow draws through this because you want to keep this as cool as possible. If it gets too hot, then basically the tobacco starts tasting like ash and burnt material. Now, I know it's lit, but it's kind of a misnomer. What you're looking for is you want it to smolder. Now, uh, one thing, if your bowl starts getting really warm, it could be a sign that you're smoking too fast and you just need to give it a slight rest. The, basically, the test is if you can hold the bowl against your cheek for five seconds and you're perfectly comfortable doing that, then you're okay. If it is too hot to do that, um, just set your pipe down, let it cool down a little bit, and then you can relight and keep going. Now, a quick word about relights. Relighting is not a huge deal. If your pipe goes out, it, it's a common occurrence. It's nothing, to, it's nothing that you did wrong, per se. You know, like, I'm talking right now, so I'm not taking a whole lot of draws. So each time, it's been almost going out when I finally do get around to it. As you can see, I'm having kind of thin smoke, so it's starting to go out on me which is perfectly fine. Uh, I prefer to do a relight than try to puff on it really fast and try to get it going again because then you end up just getting heated up and it ends up tasting burnt. That's not something I want. All right, so now you can go ahead and keep smoking. Um, once in a while, you're going to want to, as uh, a layer of ash builds up on top of your tobacco, you're going to want to take your tamper and kind of knock the ash down into the tobacco uh, that's there. I mean, you'll feel like no resistance when you're pressing through the ash and you just want to put it and rest it against the top of the tobacco. So it's pretty much gone out on me. Not a big deal. I've tamped it down and then I can go ahead and relight it again. All right, so you're smoking along. Now, if you start drawing too hard on this, there's a possibility of getting a thing called tongue bite. Now that's usually when hot smoke ends up hitting your tongue and it actually feels like a prickly or burning sensation. Now that is a sign that you can be smoking too quickly. Or you might have just a weird bit placement and you might just want to just move your bit a little bit and into the airspace above your tongue and below the roof of your mouth behind your teeth. Um, and that can usually help out a little bit. Also another trick is loosen your lips a little bit when you're drawing on your pipe so you get some fresh air that doesn't go through the pipe and then that, that can help cool the smoke down just enough by that mixing action to uh, prevent that from happening. Also if your smoke starts tasting a little burnt you can also try that loosening your lips and getting that fresh air. It can sometimes sweeten up the smoke for you. Uh, because it's going to cool it down and give you a better flavor. All right, so once you get down to about a third or a quarter of the bowl left, you may find it hard to keep it lit. Now, uh, there's a couple things you can do. You can take your pipe tool and you can take the spike and just kind of loosen up the top layer of ash and then dump that out. Uh, that will expose the top layer of tobacco and you may be able to just relight from there. You can use your tamper to kind of flatten it out before you do that. Um, also, after that, if uh, you still can't get it lit, but you still want to keep smoking, uh, you can take your pick and um, basically mix up the whole thing and uh, repack it, what's left, with your tamper. 
and you can relight that. Usually at that point is actually when I'll just stop smoking it uh, because it starts to taste kind of burnt and I'm not a big fan of the end of a bowl flavor anyways. There are some tobaccos that you can go all the way down to the bottom of the bowl and they taste great, but I find that more of the exception than the rule. So once you get to that point and you decide that you're done smoking, what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna take your pipe tool and uh, basically scoop out whatever remaining ash and tobacco is left. And then you're gonna wanna take a pipe cleaner and just run it down the stem um, as far as it will go and then pull it out and that will soak up some of the moisture that's in there. Now what, then what you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna set this down to let it cool. You never wanna remove the stem from the uh, bowl while this is warm. Uh, that'll start to loosen the connection and you don't want that because then it won't actually sit in here anymore. All right, so you'll just put this away and once it's cooled down, then you'll do the final step of cleaning. All right, so here's a pipe that I have recently smoked. Uh, it's been sitting on my 2B cleaned rack. Um, I don't clean all my pipes right away. I usually let a few build up and then I will clean them all together at once. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to remove the stem from the pipe. Uh, take a pipe cleaner and run it through the stem. Sometimes you got to go both ways depending on how bent it is. Um, this one's relatively clean. Uh, then you're going to want to take a pipe cleaner and run it through the shank down into the bowl. Uh, since this is a bent pipe, usually I can't get a pipe cleaner through the stem all the way into the bowl. If you can do that, um, sometimes you don't have to bother removing the stem. Um, this is pretty clean as well. And the last thing I do, I'll make a little U shape with this and I will run it down into the inside of my bowl. And that kind of gets a little bit of the excess dust and gunk out of there. Um, and really that's the minimal steps of cleaning. Uh, just put the stem back on and you can throw it back onto your uh, smoking rack. Um, it is recommended that you let pipes sit for at least 24 hours, preferably 48 to let them dry out and air out. Um, you don't want all that moisture to build up into the wood. Uh, it affects the smoke a little bit. So that's why a lot of people have more than one pipe because if you have to let it sit around for 24 hours, means you can't be smoking anytime soon. So there you go, how to smoke a pipe. Hopefully this video has been helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section and I will get to them as quick as possible. Or if the topic is video worthy, I may make a video about that topic. Um, as always, be sure to give it a like and subscribe and I will see you next time on Tea and Tobacco. See you guys. I'm gonna talk about a problem that we all run into now and then which is excess moisture buildup inside of our pipes, which then ends up causing gurgling. So quickly, I'm just gonna go through the top causes of gurgling, and then I'll go into more detail about them and ways you can fix them.